Hello Scholar Freaks, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about the type class hierarchy in the CATS library. Now, this video will be a little bit more complex, and this assumes comfortable experience writing Scala and with lots of abstractions. We're going to write many higher kind of type classes and so on, and we're going to motivate many of the decisions in the CATS library to isolate various behaviors. So this will involve lots of abstractions. As always, I'll recommend that you write code with me, and whenever you need to refresh your memory, you should refer back to this video or to the blog or to the CATS course. I have an entire CATS course here on, on the Rock the JVM website. I'm going to leave a link in the description if you're interested. And in the CATS course, we deconstruct most of the things that we talk about in this video and many, many more with um, exercises and use cases and thought experiments and basically lots of time on our hands. So if you're interested in the CATS course, it's the only one on the web on the CATS library to my current knowledge. So if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave a link in the description. And if you're ready to go to the CATS type class hierarchy in this video, let's go to our code editor. So I'm going to use Skull 3 for this video. However, I'm not going to use many of the fancy features of Skull 3. I'm just going to use uh, a bunch of uh, given and using uh, instances here in the code. But other than that, I'm going to use most of the same features that Skull 3 and Skull 2 share. So this is roughly applicable to Skull 2 programmers as well. Now. For the CATS type class hierarchy, I have a bunch of other videos here on the Rock the JVM channel describing some of the CATS type classes in detail, including semigroups and monoids. I'm going to start with those because they are the simplest. So I'm going to define a trait called semigroup. And semigroup has a type argument here, and a semigroup is pretty much a glorified combined function. So this will be a uh, trait with a combined method that takes two elements of type A. I'm going to call this X of type A and Y of type A, and the end result is going to be a type A. So for example, you can imagine a semigroup as a semigroup of integers where the combined method is the multiplication operation. So a semigroup can be used in a very general way in order to combine various elements of the same type. And a semigroup is very useful if you want to design very general APIs where you combine elements that you have no idea for. But if you have a semigroup in scope, you can call the combine method and then you can obtain a result. Uh, I have many examples of the semigroup type class in the semigroup video. I'm going to link that in the description. And in that same video, I also discuss about an extension to semigroup, which is called a monoid. And a monoid extends a uh, semigroup, so extends semigroup A, and besides the combination function that a semigroup has, a monoid also has a method that defines a neutral element for that operation. This is called empty. And empty is the neutral element of that combination function such that if you combine any element with empty, you will return that same element. So in the case of an integer multiplication, the empty element would be the number one, because multiplying any number by one will obtain that same number. We discuss all the details in the semigroups and monoids video. I'm going to leave that in the description. So these are some of the easiest type classes in cats because they are quite um, short and relatively easy to map to real life. Now, I also have a video on the Rock the JVM channel about a higher kinded type class called a functor. So I'm going to leave these two type classes as they are, and I'm going to add a small comment here that we have semigroup and this results into the monoid. So this uh, monoid thing derives from semigroup. I'm going to denote that by this very cute ASCII art with these, this little error over here. Now, in terms of a functor, a functor has a some very practical application. A functor type class denotes the capability of mapping wrapped values. So the trait functor takes a higher kind of type uh, f that I'm going to uh, make generic as well. And the functor type class has a very interesting method called map. This takes two type arguments a and b for value uh, arguments and this starts with a wrapper type that I'm going to call fa 
which is an f of a, and a function that will turn an a into a b. So an a into a b, and the end result is going to be an f of b. Now, why do we need this functor trait? We need a functor type class, or the capability of mapping things in a very general way, if we want to abstract away many APIs that look the same. So I have an example there in the functor video that has, uh, let's say we have a small API that does some math computations on various wrapper types. So for example, if I want to multiply an element by 10 in a list, I'm going to have a method do 10x list. And this takes a list of integers. And this results in a list of integers. And the implementation is going to be, for example, list map underscore times 10. So the map fun function exists on the list type. And the map function also exists on various other types in the Scala standard library. So for example, if I want to do, do 10x option, with an option as an option int, and this results in option int. And I do option map underscore times 10. Notice that the signature is basically identical, the implementation is basically identical, but the type, the wrapper type itself is changed. We can also do that for future, for try, for many, many other wrapper types. So if you have this kind of API that has basically similar signatures where the wrapper type is the only thing that's different and the implementations are the same, you can abstract these away by denoting a mapping functionality to a very general do 10x API. So I'm going to cut these two out, or for now I'm going to leave them on screen for you to make the comparison, but I'm going to define a method do 10x general and do 10x general should be applicable to any wrapper type that has the map function or to any wrapper type for which we can provide a map function in a more precise expression. So this do 10x general will take a type argument f, which is itself generic, much like list or option. And instead of passing a list or option, I'm going to pass a container, which is an f int. And this will result in an f int. And the implementation is going to be container.map underscore times 10. But in order to provide that map functionality, we need to provide this f thing with the capability of mapping over the internal values. So we say that we provide an implicit, or in Scala 3, a using clause for a functor, which is a functor f. And if we have a functor in scope, then we can call its map function. So I'm going to call functor map, and I'm going to start with a container, and I'm going to put underscore times 10 inside. So I'm going to write something like this. So with this do 10x general thing, we can do without these two very precise or very specific APIs. and add the two do 10x general in our general API, and all we need to do is provide an implicit functor or a given functor in scope, and we will be able to do do 10x general for list, and do 10x general for an option, and do 10x general for a future, and so on and so on, without needing to specify another method. So we can basically remove these all together and consider a very general API that only needs a given functor in scope. Now, cats also has some extension methods if we have a functor in scope. So if we have import cats syntax functor everything, then if we have an implicit or a given functor in scope, then we can say container map underscore times 10 because the extension method of map is available in the presence of a given functor. Now, my code editor is complaining that the map uh, method doesn't exist because this functor thing is the functor trait that I've defined here. But if I comment this out and import the cats functor, then I'm going to import cats functor. Now the map method should work. So cats created these type classes for us to be able to provide 
some certain functionalities to our very general data structures. So I'm going to remove these all together and I'm going to describe the major type classes in cats and how they are related to one another. Now, as a word of warning, most of the code that I'm going to write in the rest of this video is going to be highly abstract. And I'm going to make some references to real life or to real data structures for you to um, make the concepts a little bit more concrete. But other than that, I'm going to write pretty abstract code. So now we know what a functor is used for. And if you want more details, you can check out the functor video on the Ruck the JVM channel. And obviously the CATS course where I describe the functor in great detail with lots of exercises and thoughts, experiments and whatever. But you know what the functor is used for. This has the mapping capability. Now we have functor. I'm going to write that here in my big comment where I describe the cat's type class hierarchy. Now, there are functors that also have a certain capability of raising a small value of type A, small value as in a plain Scala value, into a wrapped type, F of A. That's called an applicative. So a trait called applicative, and this is also generic, so with an F, which is itself generic, this extends functor. And the fundamental method of an applicative is to be able to raise a value of type A into a wrapped type F of A. And that method is called pure. So pure takes a type argument A and takes a value of type A. And this turns a type A into a type wrapper F of A. Now applicative extends functor for the reason that cats isolates fundamental behavior. So functor has one fundamental behavior, which is the ability to map. Applicative has one fundamental method, which is the ability to lift a small value into a wrapped value, and so on and so forth. So most type classes in cats isolate independent behaviors. So um, in the rest of this video, you might see some weird type classes with some weird methods. Um, these are isolated in this case because there are instances of type classes that only have that fundamental method and nothing else. And I'm going to give some examples later in this video. So applicative extends a functor, but also has this pure method that turns an A into an FA. So we now have functor, which turns into an applicative. All right, good. So we have pure and map. Now, we also have a trait that we know from functional programming and we've also described here on the Rock the JVM channel, but not in the terms of type classes, but rather in terms of the functionality in real life and why we might need this concept at all. This is called a monad. A monad also takes a type parameter F, which is itself generic, and this extends the applicative. And I'm going to have the same type argument F here. And you know from some other articles or the Rock the JVM video that I posted here on the channel that the fundamental methods of the monad are pure and flat map. Now, you know that pure belongs to applicative now, so it doesn't belong to the monad itself, but monad has the fundamental method called flat map. And flat map takes, again, two type arguments A and B, much like map, but Instead of a function that turns an A into a B, we have a function that turns an A into an F of B. So the ability to uh, create new wrapped computations from every element. So we're going to start with an F A, which is F of A, and a function that turns an A into an F of B, not into a B. And at the very end, we obtain an F of B. And you know this from real life. Flat map is used for lists, for options, for futures, for try, for many, many data structures in the Scala standard library. Now, if we have the flat map thing, if we have this flat map method as fundamental to monad, then because we extend applicative and therefore we extend functor, we also get the map method definition. But we can implement the map method in terms of pure plus flat map for free. So we can define the map method then I can override here and I can call flat map. I can start from the same starter container FA and I will need to turn this F of A to B into an F of A to a wrapper of B. So I will need a function that turns a value of type A into 
f of a, now this will be a value of type b, but I can raise that into a wrapper of b by calling my pure method. So notice that the map method can be implemented for free if we have pure plus flat map. I'm going to collapse this code so that you don't need to care about the implementation of map. All you need to care is that we get map for free. All right, now here comes the first tricky part of this video, and that may, might be a little bit hard to explain. I explained more in the CATS course, but that will take another video like this to explain just that. And that's the fact that the flat map method doesn't actually belong to Monad, but it belongs to an intermediate type class called flat map with a capital F. So I'm going to define a trait called flat map. And for now, I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to move the flat map method on top. And instead of monad extending applicative with this method, I'm going to extend applicative with flat map. So you can think of this flat map as like of a weaker kind of monad with just the flat map method, but not the ability to raise a simple value to a, um, a wrapper type. So flat map only has the capability of chaining computations like this with f of a to wrapper b. Now, flat map will set something below applicative. I'm going to put it like this. So flat map. And applicative will run into the monad. Monad. And flat map will do something like this. That's going to describe in my amazing ASCII art diagram. So functor applicative monad and then flat map turns into a monad. Now flat map also derives from functor. So I'm going to write trait flat map which extends functor. That's because the ability to chain computations is more powerful here in flat map but more general in functor. So flat map naturally has the capability of chaining all kinds of computations either by running f uh, of a to b or f of a to wrapper b. So flat map basically describes the type class with which can chain computations of any sort. So functor does something like this. Functor goes into flat map and flat map goes into monad. All right. So we now have this small type class diagram. Okay, now monad extends applicative with flat map and we get map for free, but no new fundamental methods. In cats, we do have some fundamental methods for monad and these are some quote unquote iteration methods. And I'm not gonna describe those in this video. That will be a little bit overkill for this video, but just know that monad besides the ability to do flat map and pure, this also has the capability of doing iterative, this called tail rec m in cats. So we're gonna leave monad as it is, and I'm gonna describe the other type classes that will influence functor, applicative, and so on and so forth. Now, a word of warning, the following type classes that I'm gonna discuss will look a little bit weirder. So I'm going to uh, do my best to describe what they mean and what they do and what why they're useful, and also try to include them into this type class hierarchy that we've described so far. The first type class, that I'm going to include in the type class hierarchy is a little bit weird and it's called semi group ball with an AL at the end and this is a higher kind of type class and this doesn't extend anything and the fundamental method of a semi group hole is the ability to do a product and I'm going to describe what the product is and what uh, a good relationship to a real life use case might be. So I'm going to write the fundamental method as product and product takes two type arguments A and B as for value types. And product takes two wrapper values FA as an FA and an F of B. And this returns an F of a tuple. Now, you can imagine that this product can be applied to two lists, for example. So a semi groupal for list, the product method would do a Cartesian product between these two lists. So you will take a list of integers and a list of strings, for example, and you will obtain a list of all the combinations between the elements of those two lists. So therefore, you will get a Cartesian product or product for short. So whenever you see a semi groupal, I want you to think of a Cartesian product 
between two lists, of course, abstracted away to any type F. But this will be the general intuition of a semigroupal, so a Cartesian product. And the Cartesian product, the general fundamental capability of doing a Cartesian product, is abstracted away in this type class called semigroupal. So a semigroupal will sit somewhere in the type class hierarchy. And I'm going to move the type class hierarchy that I've defined so far, and I'm going to move it a little bit to the right because semigroupal will sit somewhere here. And I'm going to delete most of this stuff so that we have the same diagram. And we're going to establish the relationship between a semigroupal and the rest of the type class hierarchy shortly. All right, so right now a semigroupal is quite independent. Now, the next type class that I'm going to describe might be the weirdest of all. This is called apply. So I'm going to call a trait called apply. This is a higher kind of type class as well. This doesn't have any relationships to the other type classes yet. And apply has a very weird method called apply, but apply has a very special meaning in the SCAR syntax. So the apply method of the apply type class is called AP for short. And AP takes two type arguments A and B. And apply has the capability of invoking a wrapped function over a wrapped value. In the signature of the method that's translated into having a function argument wrapped into F, so an F of A arrow B, and an F of A, and apply has the capability of invoking this function wrapped in F over the value wrapped in F and obtaining a result wrapped in F. So this will be an F of B. So the fundamental capability of apply is this app method. Now apply is so abstract and apply this app method is so general that apply rarely is used on its own. But apply is useful in the type class hierarchy because with this very general method, we can implement the other methods for free. And I'm going to describe how that can be the case. Now, apply has this app method which can apply a function to a value and obtain a result, all of them wrapped in F. A semigroupal has a product method, a product not in a multiplication sense, but in a product in a Cartesian product sense, onto wrapped values fa and fb and obtaining tuples. Now, for our computations in real life, we are not necessarily interested in obtaining all the, com the combinations of elements of two lists, but we want to also process them. So we want to run a function between these two a and b and obtain a new value, maybe an f of c. So whenever you want to uh, iterate or combine uh, two lists in a Cartesian product sense, and run a function between all the combinations, you'll obtain a list of a different type. Now, that capability is not abstracted in the semigroupal sense, but it's abstracted in the apply type class. So it makes sense that apply extends semigroupal, and by extending semigroupal, we unlock some very powerful capabilities. I'm going to describe what they are. So I'm going to write extends semigroupal, so semigroupal f, and by extending semigroupal f, we get product, and product can be implemented for free in terms of app. So I'm going to uh, implement the product method. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to copy the product signature, and I'm going to implement it for free. Now, the implementation may look quite abstract, but I'm going to collapse that so that you don't really need to care about it. So how do we implement product in terms of AP? Well, we need to turn a value of type A into a value of type tuple of A and B by calling this app method. So I'm going to define a function, my function, that does the following thing. It takes a value of type A and the result of this function is another function that takes a value of type B and returns a tuple. So my function is a function from A to a function taking a B and returning a tuple. Right, 
So now we need to turn our fa into an f of a function. Now how do we turn a wrapped value into a wrapped value of a different type? Well, turning a wrapped value into a wrapped value of a different type can only be achieved by functor. So functor has the transformation capability of turning a wrapped value into a wrapped value of a different type. But now we don't have the map method, so it makes sense that this apply method extends functor. So I'm going to import functor here as well. So functor f. Now, with the mapping capability, I'm going to turn this fa value into a wrapped function. So let's call this fab, that is wrapped of a to b. So this will be an I'm going to uh, write the type later. I'm going to call the map method on fa onto this my function transformation. So by mapping the original wrapper fa into this function, I obtain a wrapper of whatever comes after the arrow a. So I'm going to obtain a wrapper over this thing. So I'm going to copy that, and this will be an f of this thing. Now I can map this again, and I can call the app method now because we have a wrapped function, and I can call that on fb. So I'm going to call app, the apply method, on fab and fb. So I'm going to call the app method on a wrapper function and a wrapped value, and I get a wrapped result. And the wrapped result is directly specified in the result type of the function being wrapped. So this will be an f of a tuple. Now, this function may look a little abstract, but I'm going to collapse that because you don't really need to care about it. You get it for free. So apply naturally extends semigroupable because we can implement product in terms of apply. Get lost, IntelliJ. All right, so we have product implemented for free. Now, with the product method implemented for free, we now have access to a more powerful method which is more naturally used in real life, and that is called mapn. Mapn takes three type arguments, a, b, and c, and takes two wrapped values, fa and fb, and the function, f that turns a tuple, a, b, into a c and returns an f of c. So apply has the capability of doing a product, a Cartesian product between two wrapped values. You can think of these as two lists, like a list of ints and a list of strings, and also run a function between all the possible combinations and obtain a list of whatever as a result. Now, in order to obtain all the possible combinations between fa and fb, we already have the general capability of doing that, and that is to call product, so product of fa and fb, and assuming I can spell product correctly, all right. Now, product of fa and fb returns an f of a tuple. Now, with the wrapper of a tuple, I can transform every tuple by running this function over its two members. So I can call map over this thing, and I'm going to deconstruct the tuple a and b, and I'm going to apply f on them. So right now, I can also have a function that transforms all the possible combinations with a function returning a different type. So you can also get this for free. So whoever ends up implementing the apply type class will only need to write this app method, which is not really that hard for standard types in Scala, and you get this map n thing for free. And this map n thing is much more useful uh, in cat's effect and in parallel and so on. So apply is very useful for this map n thing, which you can only obtain with this very general function. So I hope this at least makes some sense. So we now have the concept of apply, which extends semigroupal and functor. Now, semigroupal I've placed at the same level with functor, but they should be placed one below the other because apply extends both. So I kind of messed up my type class hierarchy. I've written a little bit of text in the meantime in my other uh, code editor. So we have a type class hierarchy that looks something like this. So we have semigroupal and functor both lead into apply. Functor leads into applicative. Applicative and flat map lead into monad. Now, what's the relationship between apply and applicative? And I'm going to be really straightforward with you. Apply 
leads into applicative. So I'm going to place semigroupal and apply at the same level as functor here. So these are the more general type classes. And applicative extends not functor, but extends apply. So applicative doesn't just extend the general functor trait, it extends a more powerful version of the functor, which is called apply. And if we extend apply, then we can get the map function, map method from functor, for free. So I'm going to copy the map definition here and paste it into applicative. So we have map from, from a wrap value of type A and a function from A to B, and we obtain F of B. Now, because we extend apply, we have access to this more powerful apply method, which wraps, which applies a wrapped function over a wrapped value, obtaining a wrapped result. So we can call the app method, and we need a wrapped function, and we can lift a function into a wrapped function with the pure method. So we can say pure F, and then we can apply that wrapped function over the wrapped value fa and obtain that f of b. And uh, no two argument lists, just a single argument list. All right, so we can obtain the map method for free. I'm going to put some curly braces here. So the map method comes for free if we extend apply. So the type class hierarchy is actually functor leads into apply, apply leads into applicative. So I'm going to put a small backslash here, and applicative leads into monad. So this is the cat's type class hierarchy that we know so far. Semigroupal, apply, flat map, functor, applicative, and monad. All right, we've gone through a lot. Beyond this, we have some special applicatives that can also wrap failed computation. That is called applicative error, and I'm going to define the applicative error here. I'm going to write a trait called applicative error. This takes a generic type argument F and an error type E, and this extends applicative, applicative with F. Now, the applicative error is a special kind of applicative which can not only raise a value of type A into a wrapped F, but it can also raise an undesirable exception or error E into an FA. So this has the fundamental method raise error that takes an A and an error, which is of type E, into an FA. So this is a purely functional errored computation. This is called applicative error. And applicative error is derived from applicative. I'm going to place that right below. So I'm going to put a backslash here, and I'm going to call this applicative error. Applicative error. Of course, I haven't placed this under comment. All right, so we have applicative error. Now, we also have a monadic error type called monad error, and this is called monad error. And this is derived, obviously, from applicative error in much the same way as monad derives from applicative. So the implication goes something like this, and the trait is called monad error, and this is a type argument f, which is itself generic, fe, and this extends applicative error with f and e with monad f. And this has no fundamental methods, it just uh, borrows the existing functionalities from applicative error and monad. Now, for all of these type classes that I've described here in this very cute, I would hope, ASCII art diagram, we spend roughly six hours in the CATS course describing every single one in detail, why each of them is useful at all, some use cases, how we can derive one from the other, and we've seen some implications here in this video, and some various thought experiments of why they might be useful both in general and in real life. I hope this video is useful. 
All right, so I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Leave me feedback in the comments. I read every single one. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material and little bits of insight into Scala and functional programming and lots of this stuff. Check out the CATS course if you're interested in learning about these CATS type classes in detail and check out the Rock the JVM website. I have tons of material on Scala and functional programming and type level and Apache Spark and Aka and so many other things. Until next video, I'm Daniel signing off.